Subterra Bravo. A government-funded facility, a labyrinthine structure hidden beneath the earth. After you awaken deep in the facility, your chances of escape depend on how well you manage your greatest weapon, which is also your greatest threat, fear itself. Level 7 Escape is a desperate game of survival against the human and inhuman denizens of Subterra Bravo. To begin the game, each player takes a character marker and the corresponding character sheet. The character sheet shows your stats, current threat, vitality, and fear. Players then shuffle and draw two skill cards. Skill cards provide unique abilities and benefits for players to use during the game. Skill cards are attached to the character sheet in the appropriate skill card slots. The rest of the setup for Level 7 Escape is determined by the scenario chosen from the scenario book included in the game. Each scenario explains how to set up the tile stacks, the enemy reserves, the threat and lockdown pools, and the player's objective. In most cases, the tiles that represent the various areas of Subterra Bravo are divided into multiple stacks, which players must explore in order as they try to achieve their objectives. Finally, players shuffle and draw adrenaline cards equal to their starting vitality. Your character sheet provides much of the information you need to explore and overcome the dangerous world of Level 7. The sheet lists your four stats, intelligence, strength, speed, and toughness. In addition, your character sheet is where you track your current threat, fear, and vitality during the game. At its core, Level 7 Escape is about fear. In order to overcome the myriad challenges of Subterra Bravo, you will need to successfully manage your fear over the course of the game. As your fear increases, you will become stronger and faster. However, this also makes you a prime target for the inhuman aliens that prowl the dark corridors of Level 7. Decreasing your fear allows you to think more clearly, providing bonuses on intelligence challenges, but significantly reduces your strength. Managing your fear is done primarily through playing adrenaline cards. Each adrenaline card has three different uses. The first allows you to increase a stat to roll more dice when attempting to overcome a challenge. The second are helpful effects that range from allowing you to move an enemy, lock a door, or reroll dice when resolving a challenge. The third is common to all adrenaline cards and allows you to discard the card to adjust your fear by one point. Playing an adrenaline card requires your fear tracker to move either up or down a certain number of points. Different positions on the fear track give you bonuses or penalties. It is very important to carefully manage your fear throughout the game to have any hope of overcoming the horrors of level 7. While the benefits provided by adrenaline cards can be great, they must be utilized carefully as they also represent your current health. At the start of your turn, you will get to draw one Adrenaline card, meaning that it will take a while to recover from an intense turn. If you are forced to discard the last Adrenaline card in your hand, you'll be knocked unconscious, possibly for good. Every character has a speed stat. This is generally how many times you can move on your turn. It costs one move to go through a door onto another tile. When you move through a door to an unexplored section of the map, you explore by drawing a new tile from the appropriate tile stack. In scenarios that use separated stacks of tiles, do not draw from a new stack until the previous stack runs out. The new tile is connected to the tile you just left. When placing a tile, you must place it in such a way that as many doors as possible are legally connected. Once the tile is placed, check to see if the tile has an event icon. If it does, you will immediately move to the trigger event step of your turn and may no longer perform actions or explore. If the new tile has an item icon, draw an item card. If you have more items than you can carry, place the extras face up onto the tile. They can be picked up for later use. In some scenarios, you peek before moving when you want to explore. Each of these scenarios identifies a tile to be set aside before the tile stacks are created at the beginning of the game. Once stack A empties, you peek instead of exploring normally. You can peek only once per tile per turn. To peek, roll a die before leaving your current tile. If the result is the double intelligence icon, place the specified tile so that it connects to your current tile. 
If you successfully peek, you must place the tile, but do not have to move to it. Otherwise, draw a tile from the stack normally and place it according to the standard exploring rules. Once stack B is emptied without the specified tile being found, a peek is successful if the roll result is either the double or the single intelligence icon. After the specified tile is found, players no longer peek when exploring. While moving through doorways is the only way to explore new areas, you can travel much faster through explored portions of Subterra Bravo by utilizing the vent system. Instead of moving normally, you can move from a vent on your tile to any other vent that is connected to it by a duct. This powerful mode of movement can mean the difference between escape and becoming trapped within the Hall of Nightmares that is Subterra Bravo. But beware, while vents provide a fast mode of travel throughout the facility, you are not the only one who can make use of it. The vicious aliens of level 7 can also travel through vents, making them as dangerous as they are beneficial. In addition to moving, you can also perform actions. Actions fall into three categories. Trade an item, pick up an item, and challenge. Each type of action can be done once a turn. Challenges range from trying to sneak past enemies to directly attacking a single enemy head on. The main type of challenges in level 7 escape are Outwit, Bull Rush, and Attack. Each challenge has a difficulty rating that players must meet or overcome by rolling a specific number of corresponding symbols on the dice. The number of dice players have available to them is based on their stats. Adrenaline cards can be used to temporarily increase your stats, allowing you to roll additional dice when attempting to overcome a challenge. When you explore a new tile, there is a good possibility it will trigger an event. There are three different types of events in level 7 Escape. Security, Fear, and Facility. If you ever explore a tile that contains one of these symbols, your turn ends and you draw an event card. Players also draw an event card if they move onto a tile with a reactivating event icon before lockdown. Event cards are divided into three parts, Spawn, Event, and Enemy Activation. When resolving an event card, you follow the steps in order from top to bottom. First, spawn the enemy type whose icon appears in the top left corner of the event card. When spawning an enemy, take the one with the lowest number from the reserves and place it on the appropriate tile closest to you. Clones spawn on fear icon tiles, and guards spawn on security icon tiles. If there is no appropriate tile available, do not spawn that enemy. In a scenario that uses the alien zone or military zone rules, the types of tiles available for spawning increase. If the alien zone rule is in effect, and there are no tiles with fear icons on the board, aliens spawn on the closest tile with a vent to you. If the military zone rule is in effect, and there are no tiles with security icons on the board, draw a new tile from the last tile stack and spawn a guard on it. Finally, if your fear is seven or more during this step, Spawn a clone on the closest vent to you in addition to any other enemies that the event spawns. Once you've spawned enemies, read and follow the instructions of the event text listed next to the tile's event icon. Some events require challenge rolls, while others are resolved with a non-challenge dice roll or a choice. If an event offers a choice and one option is not possible, you must choose the other option. If part of an option is possible though, you can still choose that option. For example, you draw an event card with the facility event text. Each player chooses to gain either one threat or three fear. If your fear was at six, you could choose to gain either one threat or raise your fear to the maximum of eight, even though that is an increase of less than the three fear the card specifies. However, if your fear was already at eight, you could not choose to gain fear and would have to gain one threat. When an event card presents a challenge, it is resolved like other challenge actions. You must use the stat listed by the challenge, and roll the listed number of stat icons on the dice. The final step in resolving an event card is to activate all the listed enemies. How to activate enemies is covered further in enemy activations. After you have fully resolved an event card, your turn is over. If you don't draw a card because of an event icon on your turn, you still draw one event card at the end of your turn, but only follow the spawn and enemy activation sections, meaning the pressure never lets up.
The bottom row of boxes on each event card determines how enemies behave in level 7 escape. Enemy activation is determined by the number of players that started the game. For example, if three players started the game, then follow the activation for the box marked 3. The enemies on the board that match the icon in the activation box are activated in order from the lowest number to the highest. If multiple icons are in the box, resolve the activation of all the enemies matching the first icon, and then resolve activations for the second icon. Hybrids don't have an activation icon on the event card. Instead, they activate at the end of every enemy activation step. When a guard, clone, or hybrid activates, it takes one of the following actions. Attack, move, or recover. When an enemy activates on the same tile as a valid target, it attacks. Enemies choose what to attack based on the threat or fear of the potential target. Guards attack the target with the highest threat. Clones and hybrids attack the target with the highest fear. Players are always valid targets, but each scenario describes when guards and aliens view each other as potential targets. Each enemy has an attack stat that determines how many dice it rolls when attacking. When more than one enemy of the same type is on a tile, they attack together. Roll a number of dice equal to the activating enemy's attack stat, plus one die for every additional enemy of the same type on that tile. Clones and guards add up the number of strength icons in their attack roll, while hybrids add up the number of intelligence icons to determine success. If a guard or clone attacks you, discard an adrenaline card for every strength icon rolled over your toughness. If you are forced to discard your last card, you are knocked out and moved off the map to the infirmary. If you are attacked by a hybrid, raise your fear by one for each intelligence icon rolled over your toughness stat. If this would push your fear higher than eight, you are knocked out. If the attack is against another enemy, remove one enemy defender from the tile if the number of icons is greater than or equal to the target's toughness, plus one additional defender on that tile for every extra icon rolled. If an active enemy has no valid target for an attack, it moves one tile. Clones and hybrids move toward the target with the highest fear level, and guards move toward the target with the highest threat level. If two targets have the same level, the enemy moves toward the one that is closest. If an enemy has multiple potential paths that move at the same distance towards its target, the player resolving the event card decides where the enemy will move. An enemy that was stunned will recover by standing up if there is no player on the same tile with it, but if it recovers, it cannot attack or move during that turn. Clone nests and guard posts are enemy generators. Enemies are generated at the end of an activation. During clone activations, spawn a clone onto every tile with a clone nest. During guard activations, spawn a guard onto every tile with a guard post. Enemies spawned this way cannot take any other actions during the turn they are spawned. Escaping level 7 is no simple task. You will be forced to manage your ever-increasing fear as you battle humans, aliens, and even the Subterra Bravo facility itself. It's up to you to decide if you will work together with your fellow escapees to overcome these challenges or simply use them as sacrificial pawns to ensure your own survival. Welcome to a new level of fear.